Welcome to Discovery. We're so glad you guys are joining us online early. So today I thought we could play a little bit of Would You Rather. And then I'm going to show you my favorite game, Pie Face. I'll be doing that at the end of each clip. So here we go. Would you rather listen to Nickelback or get an ear infection? Tell us in the comments. All right, welcome back. Sorry if you're just tuning in. This will make sense at the end. All right, so would you rather <laughs> go skydiving with a skunk or would you rather go bungee jumping with a porcupine? Oh. <laughs>
All right, welcome back. Yep, we're playing Pie Face today. And would you rather, here's your next one. Would you, oh, and I should preface, this is for all of you TikTok fans out there. That's right. Would you rather eat a baby goat or a matter baby? Tell us in the chat. Welcome back. We are going to get started with our service today. Go ahead, turn up your TV as loud as you can. Put us on the biggest screen in your house. And I'm going to give this a go. One more time. Okay. Oh. See you soon.
Discovery. We are so glad you're joining us online today. Every year, we throw a huge party called a Night to Remember for those with special needs in our community. Unfortunately, things had to look a little different this year. DJ Craig Evans reached out to us, and we threw an online dance party instead. Check out some of these moves. You can find the full dance party on our YouTube channel. And I'm so glad to be a part of a church who does things like this. If you want to get to know more about us, we've got a Next Steps Zoom call next Sunday, the 31st at noon. This is a great way to get to know our lead pastor, Matt, and hear about what Discovery is all about. Another way to get connected is to like Discovery's Instagram or Facebook page. As you know, each week brings its own challenges, and I hope you're reaching out to someone. We've got people here in the chat room ready to talk to you or pray with you, and they would love to hear from you. Okay, so I'm a little bit bummed that I haven't heard from my future self yet, and everyone else has, and she's just not showing up. So I guess we'll jump into week six of our seven-week series, Tomorrowland. This week, we're talking about how we can look out for the left out. I hope you enjoy this message and are challenged by the ways Jesus calls us to care for the left out. Oh. It's happening! Oh, look at you. Ooh. It's so good to see you. Todd, come look at my beautiful skin. It's not all wrinkly. It's beautiful. Sorry, I lost my top dentures. I think the dog buried them in the backyard again. It's so good to see you. Turn it off. Okay. I was a little bit more than I was... I don't know, expecting. So I'm gonna go buy some facial cream and put it on all day long and go make an appointment with my dentist. I hope you all enjoy the message today. We could momentarily escape from our 21st century lives and fill the room with stereophonic music from another age. up of a possible future telephone. Now, if I want to see the people I'm talking with, I just turn the button and... There is a children's book called The All Better Book by Susie Becker. And the basis of this book is she lays out these massive worldwide problems and asks children to solve them. And as you can imagine, their responses are priceless. One of the problems that she posed to the children was, in a world of almost 8 billion people, shouldn't someone create a system to better connect all of us so that no one is lonely. Well, an eight-year-old girl offered up her solution. Here's what she wrote. She said, I think we should find hurting and lonely people and ask them for their name and address. Then we find people who aren't hurting and lonely and ask them for their name and address. And once we have an even number of each, then we can assign the hurting and lonely people to the not so lonely and hurting people through an ad in the newspaper. Well, another boy uh, named Max, five years old, offered up his solution. He wrote, I think we should create food that talks to you when you eat. That way, no one would be lonely. And 
I know that idea might sound a little far-fetched and that Max might need a head checkup next time he goes to the doctor, but I think we're closer to this becoming reality than you think. A few months ago, I was traveling and I was at an airport bar and the guy brought me uh, a thing of pretzels. And as I started to grab one, the pretzel began to speak to me. It said, hey, you're a good looking guy. And I said, thanks. And then another pretzel said, and you've got a great sense of style. Well, when the server came back, I said, hey, what is the deal with these pretzels? And he said, oh, nothing. They're just complimentary. I thank you. And yes, I probably need to get a head checkup as well for even telling that joke. But it is a good question, right? With billions of people in the world, shouldn't someone be able to find a solution to help all the hurting and the lonely people? If you've been online with us the last couple of weeks, you know that we have been in a series called Tomorrowland, and we are dreaming about what heaven will be like. And in heaven, there will be no more loneliness, no more broken families, no more orphans, no more widows, no more widowers. Everyone will just belong. Everyone will experience perfect community. We will truly be one big forever family with our heavenly Father. But we don't have to wait for heaven. God wants to bring heaven to earth here and now. God did create a system to alleviate the hurting and the loneliness to the world. It's us, it's you, it's me. And here's today's big idea. The citizens of Tomorrowland bring heaven to earth when we look out for the left out. Did you know that there are over 440,000 children in the U.S. languishing in our foster care system? that 70% of girls who are in the foster care system will become pregnant by the age of 21. That 74% of prison inmates were once in the foster care system. That 50% of young adults who have aged out of the foster care system will be incarcerated within two years. And that 80% of death row inmates were formerly in the foster care system. And that's just in the U.S. Globally, worldwide, according to UNICEF, there are around 153 million orphans. It's just a staggering number. Or maybe that number just leaves you feeling numb. Like, what could I even do to possibly make a dent in that number? But what encourages me is when I realize there are a couple billion followers of Jesus in this world. What gives me hope is there are way more followers of Jesus in Pennsylvania than the 17,000 kids who need a family in the state where I live. As a matter of fact, if only one family from every church in Pennsylvania fostered or adopted one child, we would empty the foster care system. And I believe that God has placed you and me where we live to do just that. My prayer this week is that we would wake up to the fact that citizens of Tomorrowland are God's plan A in solving the orphan crisis, the children at risk crisis in the world. I want you to listen to these words from, from James, the half-brother of Jesus in, in chapter 1, verse 27. It says, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself being polluted by the world. You know, the Bible is crystal clear that caring for children at risk, children in need of families, it's close to the heart of God. That one of the names the Bible gives God is He is the Father to the fatherless. And I believe God has specifically called us to reflect Him in this way. That when we look at all the problems in the world, you talk about broken families, the orphan crisis, HIV AIDS, child soldiers, refugee crisis, human trafficking, divorce, abortion, the opioid epidemic, poverty, substance abuse, homelessness, domestic abuse, gang violence, racism, the list goes on and on and on. But here's the question. Who pays the highest price for all of these problems in the world? It's children. The ones who didn't cause any of these problems are the ones who are affected the most. They are the most vulnerable. They did not choose this. They have no voice in the matter. They cannot vote, and yet they pay the highest price. 
And that's why God says to us in Psalm chapter 82, he says, defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. You know, when we choose to defend and rescue a child, I believe that we are never more like God. When we invite a child into our family, why? Because if you're a follower of Jesus, that's exactly what God has done to you. I want you to look at Romans chapter 8. I love this. It says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God, those of us who are followers of Jesus, are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him, we cry, Abba, Father. You know, every single one of us, before we become a follower of Jesus, we were spiritual orphans because of our sin. That our sin separated us from our loving Father God. But because Jesus was willing to go to the cross and take our punishment for us, He made a way back to God for us. When we put our faith in Him, we are adopted into the family of God. And in that moment, you became the son and the daughter of the king, a citizen of heaven. Not because we are so good, but because he is good. And because you were chosen by God and because he delights in you, he dances over you, he loves seeing his kids come back to him. And I believe when we realize that we were once spiritual orphans, before we put our faith in Jesus, we will then open our eyes and hearts to the orphans in our community and in our world. I know for me, that I didn't really understand the love of God, the Father, until I became a father myself. When I was in my 20s, I was single. I watched all my friends get married and they started having kids and I was unmoved by all of that. I wanted nothing to do with that. I wanted to be married. I just didn't want kids. I was a youth pastor and worked with hundreds of other people's kids, and that was the best kind of birth control a man could ask for. But early on in my relationship with Janie, I think it was our first date, actually, we talked about our desires for what a family would look like, and we both had a strong desire to adopt. So two years into our marriage, we put an application into a small Christian orphanages on the other side of the world in Taiwan. And a few months later, on Christmas Day, I was awoken to a very excited Janie who was like a kid on Christmas morning. And she said, we just got a phone call from Taiwan. And we picked up the phone and it was the director of the orphanage. And he said, Merry Christmas, Matt and Janie, check your email. And I saw this waiting for me in my email. You know, we traveled to Taiwan six months later. We got to meet and hold our son for the first time. An unbelievable experience. And I remember the director of the orphanage, as I was signing our adoption paperwork, he said, Matt, you are never more like God than in what you're doing right now. He is the father to the fatherless. And right now you are becoming that. You know, holding my son for the first time and the first time he looked at me with that little smile and grabbing hold of my finger with his little tiny hand. It was just a glimpse of how God felt about me but do you see the parallels between adoption and how God adopts us? That both require great sacrifice, a great cost to bring into our forever family. But here's the thing. There has never been a, a, an adoption that's happened by accidents. There are surprise pregnancies, but there are never surprise adoptions. There are never surprise foster families. We tell our boys all the time, of all the children in all the world, God gave us the opportunity to bring you into our family. That God chose you and that we chose you. That adopting a child or fostering a child, it requires a choice. And friends, I believe God is calling every single one of us to engage in this in some way. God may not be calling you to adopt. He might not be calling you to foster a child, but he is calling you to do something. I want to read that passage from James 1.27 again. It says that religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. You know, what comes after this? You know, the things that we think of as religious, what do we tend to think of? Things like going to a church service or 
reading God's word or being generous with the resources God has given us or praying or serving, being in a Bible study, listening to worship music, going on a mission trip. Is that what follows after this religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless? No. But what comes next? It says to look after orphans. To look after orphans. God is calling you to do something. So I want to help all of us discover what that something is. Today, we have a very special guest. Uh, her name is Missy Reeder, and she's from Bethany Christian Services, and she's going to be joining us in just a moment. And Bethany is an organization that works nationwide to help make sure that children at risk have loving families. Watch this. We were born into this world looking for connection. We opened our eyes in search of love. But our world knows a million ways to break. Crisis, a massive earthquake. The opioid epidemic is spreading across the U.S. For the child who feels alone at home and the one unprotected at the border. For orphans living in institutions and refugees living in uncertainty. We will never stop fighting for you. For the love you need and the safety you seek. Because no matter what forces pull us apart, there's a greater force that brings us together. We are here with uh, Missy Reader from Bethany Christian Services. And like I said earlier, they are a national organization. I, listen, I know a lot of uh, Discovery is here in Pittsburgh area, uh, but a lot of people who've been on digitally with us are coming from all over the country, really all over the world. And so I would encourage you, as you listen to, to Missy, um, there's probably a, a Bethany close to you to reach out to them. And if you can't find, um, if there's not a Bethany, reach out to them anyway, and they can point you in the right direction. And so we're really glad to have you here with us today. Could you speak to the, the, really the children at risk here in Pittsburgh and our surrounding region? What does that even look like here in our, in our area? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say right now, especially with the pandemic and COVID-19 and everything, things for our children and families here in Pittsburgh and around the world, to be honest, have changed drastically. They have um, needed things that they haven't needed before. Parents are becoming um, stay-at-home parents and teaching parents, um, so they've needed a lot more resources. But I would say a lot of our children who um, have been adopted in our pregnancy counseling um, service, a lot of them uh, almost half have either be, been exposed to drugs or exposed to um, alcohol prenatally before birth. Um, and also a lot of their parents have, um, their biological parents have been, um, have mental um, disabilities and mental um, just problems that they have dealt with throughout their life that kind of puts a real strain on the child and their um, developmental walk and growth. Do you have a number in mind of like how many children right now maybe um, just don't have a strong family structure that goes through the Bethany system? Yeah, I would say almost half, almost half of the children. I can't put an exact number on it, but I would, I would say almost half of our children. Yeah. Okay. Well, so what are some like misconceptions? Because when people think about adopting a child or going, being a foster parent, there's all kinds of um, uh, untruths mm -hmm. out there, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a chance right now to kind of dispel some of those. What, yes. are, what would some of those be? Yeah. So I would say the biggest with adoption would be um, 
families who consider adoption are afraid that those parents are going to come back and take that child away later in life. And that's a really scary thing to think about. Um, but we as an organization walk through that process with you and we're there for you to disclose all of that kind of stuff. And we're going to be completely honest with you about the struggles you're going to have. And it's not easy. It's your bi it's not your biological um, son or daughter or whoever it is. And that is something that's hard that we walk through that process with you. So I would just say they're scared about that process of someone coming back um, and trying to take that child away through adoption. Um, for foster care on the other end, it's a little bit different, but I would say um, that our children, our families are very hesitant to um, do it because they're afraid of giving them back. So we work towards reunification with Bethany and we work towards coming alongside the biological parents and getting them to the place that they need to be to be able to get their children back. Um, and that is hard. That's a hard thing to do. It takes a special person to go through that process. So that would be the biggest misconception that people have that, yeah, that's going to be hard, but we're here to walk through that with you. So let's, let's talk about the reunification. Like that's, mm -hmm. that is it is God's desire for a child to be with a family. Yes. And to for the for the bio parent mm -hmm. to really to 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 be the the champion for that child to raise that child. That's what you're working towards, mm -hmm. and that's what we should all be working towards. Yeah. And so a foster parent, um, you know, it's not the same of hey, it probably happens mm -hmm. sometimes where that reunification doesn't happen. Right. So. Well, how would you encourage someone to mm -hmm. say, am I that unique person who could mm -hmm. actually do this, could, could, mm -hmm. could take a child into my home and realize I'm going to give them a healthy place to live for now, but mm -hmm. my, the hope is that that mom, the dad can get healthy, can get back to uh, raising this child. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's dead on. I would say that God has created us in a way to love and care for people and we can get attached to that and we can have that emotion. Um, but to be able to relinquish that back to the Lord and say, okay, we're going to mm. let this child go back to their original parents because that's where God designed them to be, to be honest, um, with their biological parents. That's where he wanted them to be. And we're going to come alongside these children and help them through this process along with the biological family to get them back to the place they need to be um, and to know that it's in God's hands and he has control and he's going to do with it what he wants. That's that's really very well said. <laughs> Um, can you maybe share, like, I know you, you guys are very careful about, you know, giving information about personal past adoptions or pa past foster children, uh, foster families, but can you give us, like, um, kind of talk about, like, what a, a success story would look like mm -hmm. um, so that uh, what you have seen, you know, you've worked with Bethany for a year and a half now, uh, what are some success stories that maybe you have you, you, you've seen or what it what it looks like for you? Yeah, I would say especially with some foster families that we've had, we've seen so many kids um, come through. And we've also seen them um, grow in ways that we've never seen before, but especially the parents. Mm -hmm. Those foster parents grow in ways that we've never seen. And Yes, they may be reunified with their biological parents, but those foster parents are still in contact with those kids to this day. Um, and there's a lot of families that we have that will write letters on their birthday or go see them still and keep in contact with them after they're back with their biological family. So I think that's just pretty cool to see that those families are still connected. Yeah. We talk about the cost. Let, let me, let's get out there, because I'm sure people out there are going, you know, so an adopt, in, in an adoption process, a foster, what is the cost involved with that other than obviously mm -hmm. time, commitment, um, those things, but what is the cost would be involved? Yeah, so for adoption, um, here in Western Pennsylvania, it's around $29,000 to um, go through an adoption. Um, but I will say through our organization, we help you find resources to eliminate some of that cost that you would have, whether it's you're working with your church group or whether you're um, working with different grants or organizations to eliminate some of that cost, we do um, work with that. Um, for foster care, I will say that there is no upfront cost. Um, there is um, no home placement um, and home study um, fee for any of that. The only cost to foster care is really getting those background clearances um, and those annual physicals and that kind of stuff that's that or for parents, and that's normally around um, $150 per, per parent in the household, so not too much at all. I said earlier in, in the message that mm -hmm. God may not be calling you to adopt or to be a foster mm -hmm. parent, but God is calling you to do something. Mm -hmm. How can we as a church, you know, Discovery, we are 
I believe the best is yet to come. We are becoming who God wants us to be right now. How can we as a church and as individuals really engage in the foster care, uh, children at risk, uh, crisis in our city, in our community? Um, how can we as a church come alongside of that yeah. and, and, and parents who are, who are right now saying, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. That's that's a great question, and I love hearing that question because I love to answer it. Um, but there's many things that people can do, even if they're not interested in being a foster parent or an adoptive parent. There is so much out there, and I would say the biggest thing is one of the principles that we stand on, and that is Matthew um, 2540, and what you did to the least of these, you did to me. So mm -hmm. what we're doing for these children and these families and coming alongside them and caring for them and praying. I would say prayer is the biggest tool that we have. That is something people can do every day. And the power of prayer is huge. Um, as we come together as a church body to really pray for these children and these families that are struggling, that is one of the biggest things that you can do. Um, aside from that, we are always looking for volunteers at our organization. It takes an army of God to put this together and to be able to care for these children, not just the staff or the donors, or um, it takes the churches and the volunteers to be able to put that on. So we have support groups that we offer that we bring in volunteers for to help facilitate um, and also help provide meals for those support groups. Mm. Um, so we have a lot of events throughout the years we bring in volunteers for that kind of stuff. Um, but then also donating financially. We're a nonprofit organization and we run solely um, by donors and then also um, through contracts through the state as well with um, foster care. Um, but we also um, really like to have people come alongside us and support us financially and kind of um, just step into that place with us and walk through that that building relationships. And your branch is in Wexford. Yes. We're talking just down the road yes. from <laughs> where we are physically at Discovery now. So we have a, a great uh, proximity to you. So it's perfect mm -hmm. that, we, that you are basically a neighbor yeah. of ours. I have known of Bethany for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. When we lived in Orlando, I know of several friends of mine who have uh, fostered and then adopted uh, uh, and have, you know, they've built beautiful families or have reunification for, with, with, with the bio parents. And I, I have watched, uh, I, I love even hearing, hearing you talk how Christ, the gospel, is at the center mm -hmm. of what you do. Yes. Um, which is very different from other organizations uh, who do the very same thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's different with Bethany. So I personally have seen this and would uh, give them uh, full endorsement in this. So if you right now um, are watching this and you're like, I just want some more information, we're going to ask you to text. Text the word CHILD, all right? Just text, it's going to come through on the screen. Text CHILD to this number, 724-780-0061. And we will make sure that you get the information that you will have some, uh, you'll get reached out to so that you can uh, begin a process to find out how you can do something that God is saying. Um, this is what pure religion looks like. This is what it is. Uh, we want all of us with our hands in this uh, as God continues to work through us. Mm -hmm. So thanks for joining us today, Missy. Yeah, and uh, we look me. forward to having a long partnership with you guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. Everybody deserves a family, and I'm going to give them one. Bethany believes that we should always let the family stay together. They did not know any Spanish whatsoever, and I did not know any English whatsoever. <laughs> where I would be if it wasn't for them.
right now we're going to take the time together to just focus and reflect upon the sacrifice of Jesus. And we are going to be doing that through this next song. We'll be taking communion um, together wherever we are um, all across Discovery. So we invite you to go ahead and grab those elements, a little bit of bread that represents the body, the sacrifice of Jesus, and a little bit of juice to represent his blood that was poured out upon the cross for each and every one of us. So we invite you to, again, do that during this song. And I hope that you're just reminded of the promise and the truth of this song. It sings, God is with us. He is our savior. He is our strength and ultimately our redemption. And I think upon uh, Jesus' life on earth, how the father was constantly with him. And he would draw away to be with the father, to come to the father's feet. And I think of how that same father to Jesus Christ in the flesh is the same father to us today here on earth. So I hope you just go with that truth today and that you're able just to meditate upon that as we go through this next song.
discover we love you and we love worshiping with you. We hope you have a great rest of your weekend and a week. Go on this truth today. We'll see you next weekend.